We have lightsabers that extend out to a certain length. We have blasters that shoot lasers. Our ships can travel faster than light speed. We've built doomsday weapons the size of planets. Our vehicles hover above the ground. But we can't get a data storage device smaller than the size of our face? What is this, the 70s? Hey man, how groovy are my sideburns? This review is sponsored by Dorkside Toys. If you ain't on the dork side, you're on the wrong side. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Rebel Trooper, or as I always called it, the Rebel Fleet Trooper. I don't know if that's right now. Hmm. Anyway, we've been waiting for this figure for damn near a year now. San Diego Comic-Con is next week. It was revealed at last year's San Diego Comic-Con. I remember walking up to the booth, or was it the panel? Either or, the first glimpse of it, I was like, oh, I need a few of those. But I'm down for troopers. I love stormtroopers, but I also love rebel troopers. I just love the grunts kind of flanking the main heroes. If I were in the Star Wars universe, I would be one of these guys. I have no delusions of grandeur that I would be a hero or a Jedi or something. I would be in the army, you know, blasting, just trying to stay out of the way. Looking at the box, it's your standard Black Series box. Black, red, figure in the window, name. On the side, the Rebel Trooper is number 69 in the series. There is so many jokes to be made here, but I'll leave it at, uh, I, I hope to have many more 69s in the future. Here's a larger shot of the pretty package art. Looks like he should be on currency of some kind. Rebel Trooper, bio for the Rebel Trooper. Down here's the warnings. The unreadables probably says something like, please, hold back from making any more 69 jokes. On the other side, the big font for Rebel Troop. On the top, the blackness of space. On the bottom, legalese, warnings, more unreadables, barcode, I don't speak barcode, but I'm gonna get this open and see just how many more of these I'm gonna need. And there we go, all out of the package and uh, ooh. <laughs> I like this a little bit more than I probably should. And I think it all boils down to him looking very cowboyish. It's something I never noticed before. You know, the Rebel Troopers, they were at the first of A New Hope. They may be scattered elsewhere. They're in Rogue One. But watching the movie, you don't really pay a lot of attention to them. Unless you're, you know, like us, uh, waiting for action figures, scouring through visual dictionaries, googling pictures all the time. But now that I have this in hand, and Hasbro doing a great job of replicating that in plastic, form. I'm really digging the design here. Now the vest is an overlay. It comes off. I'll show that here in a minute. But even being an overlay, it looks like part of the sculpt when it's actually on the figure. Nice pockets, nice wrinkles. Same thing for the undershirt, the sleeves, the pants, the boots. I'm trying to talk it up more than I actually should because when it comes down to it, it's just a dress shirt, some baggy pants, some boots, and a vest. But like I said, Hasbro did a good job of putting it into toy form. And then we get up to the head and it's kind of generic. I'm sure there was a trooper that looked like this. Face is a nice sculpt though for a generic person. Same for the hair. It's gray but it has a brown wash to it to kind of bring out the detail. And then the face printing. The photo reel looks just really great here. The eyes and lips have a lifelike quality to them because it's kind of glossy against the matte flesh tone. But unfortunately the eyebrows also got that glossiness so they kind of stand out in that regard. But I love the 70s sideburns on them. Now this is where I usually go into the negatives of a figure before getting into the articulation, the accessories, the pop positives, that kind of thing. But I'm really having to dig deep here for this figure. The wrists are on a hinge, but as you can see, well, it, I've worked on this one. Up, it kind of comes back down. It wants to go to neutral position. I pulled the hand out and you can see the peg. If you go up, you can just see the peg roll back around. It doesn't want to go. I don't know if there's a detent in there holding it, a, a huge one, and the hand is too soft to allow it to click out. But I have got it to where, it, well, now that one's going back. I had it a minute ago to where it wanted to go. I have about that much range. It just doesn't want to go all the way, which realistically it's inside the sleeve. So you can't get that much movement because of this coming up and around the hand. But I like to have movement where it's supposed to be. Same with the left. I've worked on this, but out of the package, it just wanted to go zzz, right back to original position. But getting super nitpicky before just gushing joy all over this figure. If you look at the knees, this knee looks very natural. It's part of the sculpt. It kind of just blends in. For some reason, this one, comes up and over the top of the leg and just looks stuck on. I, like it wasn't actually formed for this leg. I mean, it's there. You can see this wrinkle right here travels from the knee down into the lower leg. So I think that is the right knee. It just doesn't look right. You can also see that it kind of gaps right there. Whereas this one 
very flush. But that's getting really nitpicky. I'm sure there's somebody typing right now going, hey, you negative bastard, just enjoy the figure. I do enjoy the figure because check this out. If you take this vest piece off, which it slips right down, look at the new articulation on the Black Series figure. It's got a butterfly joint goes back goes forward and it has a nice range of movement really and i can only guess they put this in to replicate that iconic rebel trooper pose of getting the gun out in front of him and that's awesome hasbro yes keep on you know experimenting or implementing new articulation that's what we need in the black series but you knew there was a butt coming didn't you you put the vest back on which is easy enough you get it on you put it under the collar looks great but you put that on and it's in the way of that articulation. What I have been able to do is put the blaster in his hand and then bring this around and lock this hand into that position. So it doesn't work as beautifully as it does without the vest, but you can still get it to work. And that's on top of this also having the dumbbell joint up at the top of the neck. So you get a ball joint up in there, a ball joint right here. But for some reason, they didn't put what I've seen with other figures, the ball joint down at the bottom of the neck to give a little bit of hinge here. So this isn't quite as, get your ass back on there. It doesn't get quite as much down. I can push it down to there, but watch it pops back up because that's actually the dumbbell bending down to there. But tilt is still my major get with this joint. That's way better than what we were seeing with the old hinge and ball joint. Now going over articulation, I just kind of went over the neck, but we'll go down, we'll go up, tilt, tilt, swivel. Like I showed, butterfly joint, forward, back. That comes out to a hinge and swivel at the shoulder. You can get up to there, swivel around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow, comes up past 90. Then that swivels. Up and down hinge for the gun hand, side to side hinge for the left hand, swivels. Ball joint in the torso, goes, man, not a lot of crunch. Back, tilt, tilt, swivel. Ball coming out to the hip, goes all the way forward, back, out, swivel at the thigh. Double knee doesn't come quite all the way up to kick his own ass, but boop, boop. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with a blaster we've seen several times before. We've seen it with the Death Star Trooper or the Death Squad Commander. It came with Lando. I'm sure we saw it several times before that. But it's a nice sculpt. It's that iconic rebel type blaster. Now this goes into his hand really, really nicely. Finger into the trigger guard holds it great. And like I said, if you can lock his hands, you can get him into the pose of holding it out in front of them. Elbows are doing a little bit more work than the butterflies with the vest on, but you get the idea. And then we get to the holster. It holds the gun, but it feels like the vest is in the way. You gotta kinda smash the vest in between the gun and the holster. You can also have the vest on the outside of the gun over it, but that sticks out really far. He comes with the Death Star plans on the data tapes, and it's got nice little itty bitty details on it. it. Looks like a circuit board here and there, and then the gold, really super reflective circle on the one side. And then finally his helmet. I thought this thing was gonna be a pain in the ass, but this is a lot more versatile than I thought it would be. The sculpt is nice. I like the shiny black on it, but essentially it's just a white mold with a little bit of paint on top of it. Now to put this on, it's easiest to put his chin in the guard and then just slide his head up in there. You would think with his hair, even though it, you know it's pretty modest hair, it would get in the way, but some shifting around and the helmet looks pretty good. For riding a 10 speed, whew, nice and solid. It doesn't fall off, but I suggest if you want to move the head around, I would put the head into the position you want it in and then putting the hat on. For some reason, I just don't trust this strap. I'm afraid of tearing it out. Also, if you look really close to get nitpicky again, the black paint kind of misses the sculpt line right here and then comes up into the line. But you'll never see that on a galloping horse. But that brings up the question of head swaps. With Hasbro's new neck, they've kind of <laughs> screwed us in that regard. All the old heads have a bigger ball going up into the head and then it has the hinge in the neck. So it's not really compatible with this, but hey, we're customizers or we can be customizers. We can figure out pins or, you know, blue tack or just glue the damn things on. But my big worry was the helmet, and surprisingly, this fits a lot more heads than I thought it would. You can't get too crazy with the hair. If there's some on the side, it gets in the way of the strap, and it kind of blows the illusion of them wearing the helmet. But if they have a sensible haircut, or even bald, this fits way better than I thought it would. But the big head swap was gonna be with the Death Star Trooper, with the photo reel there, but again, he has the big ball going up into the head, the hinge, and the neck and he's got a pretty close cut to the hair. Surprisingly, it's a loose fit here. You can get his chin in, but then there's gap in between. But if you bring it down a little bit or just kind of shove it on, 
that's not bad. The head does come across a little bit large when just sitting on top of the Rebel Trooper's shoulders. And to reverse that, if you wanted to take the Rebel Trooper and put it on the Death Star Trooper, because of the lack of hair on the Death Star Trooper and the extra hair on the Rebel Trooper, I, that doesn't really work. Now comparing the two Black Series Troopers side by side, they fit together perfectly. These two fighting on a battleground of some kind, yeah, this'll work. Same goes for the Black Series Stormtrooper. It, these were made for each other, surprisingly, in the same line, from the same company. Here he is with the Bespin Han that comes in the same assortment, again, two humans standing beside each other. Totally works. And then finally, here he is with Gus. <laughs> Old Gus has got some new duds. So at the end of the day, like I said, I think I like this way more than I probably should. It should just be a generic trooper. You get some, you put them in the background, uh, you forget about them, you watch the movie again, you're like, oh, there he is in the movie. But it's not, it's an interesting, dynamic action figure. Hasbro slipped some innovation in there with the shoulder butterflies. I hope we see more of that in the Black Series. It's an excellent sculpt with some extra paintwork thrown in there to kind of dirty it up to bring out some details here and there. It's using the face printing technology. It's using the new neck that I love so much. Hasbro is upping their game. They're getting up to that quality, which I'm afraid they're going to up the price to here soon to make up for all this innovation that they're throwing into the figures. But it could be worse. We could still be getting the same old, same old with the kind of G.I. Joe-ish paint apps on the face, the kind of dead eyes. We could still be getting the less than 90 degree joints in the elbows. There wasn't a whole lot wrong with the old style neck, but now that we have the new style neck, it's like, I don't want any of that old shit. It's just so much better. They're moving up and up and up. And yeah, I gropped about the Han face earlier in the week, but that's a very iconic, distinguishable face that's just been burned in our brains for 40 years. Here, the paint apps on the face, it's not trying to, or at least in my brain, not trying to resemble any certain person. It's a generic dude in generic clothes, so this could be anybody. I'm not trying to find that likeness in the face, so this works perfectly fine for my purposes. And how many am I gonna need? 69 of them, at least. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.